Hey everybody, Paul Marklin was here for another video. This is actually take two. I'll explain the reason a little bit later. A little irritated about that, but whatever, you know. Uh, I'm going to cover a few things with this video. Um, I'm back for a few videos, you know. It's not going to be constant like everyday videos, but I'll make one here and there. Probably like two or three times a week maybe. You know, hopefully, um, the whole reason I haven't been doing videos for the past forever, it seems, is one, I moved from the house actually next door back to my grandma's house. Um, don't want to get in discussion about that. You know, my whole family's over here now. Uh, during that, I don't have any internet, so I used to do the videos off the, the um, laptop, but I'm doing them off my phone now. And uh, basically what that is, like, if you notice, I only have, like, two views for video. It's the whole reason is that because I don't have any tags on them, basically. I can only put one tag, or I don't know how to do tags on the phone. I don't really care about that. So I'll make a video, and if one person watches it, it's more ungrateful. Um, another reason I'm back is I'm going to give a shout-out for two people who actually want to see me make videos. They're cool guys. You should check them out if you're going to watch this. One is Cabal the Executioner. You know, a cool guy. I've been following him since he was, you know, the like WrestleMan TV and all that stuff. He, he does a lot of cool things. He's a cool guy. Another dude is, um, you know, King Kwon Do. He's a cool guy, too. He's from the um, other side of the pond. Yeah, they both requested, oh, you, know, you should be doing videos. Because, you know, basically, I leave, like, but little books in the comments section about people's topics and stuff and how I feel. It, it gets long, I noticed that, and I'm like, ah, oh, shit. And, you know, they, they even said, you know, those two's like, oh, you should start to make a video again. And I'm like, might as well, you know what I mean? Yeah, so basically, I'm at my grandma's house now. And another reason I don't make videos is I like making them in private. Now, this is my second try because I already got interrupted once. Hooray. Um, I'm probably going to get interrupted again. I live in a house with six people. I don't really have time to be in private. I like making videos in private, and I'm being outside by a lonesome, get bit up by any mosquitoes, probably going to get some virus or whatever, so it's like, yeah, whatever. But yeah, living here is fun. <laughs> so, yeah, now I was getting the meat and potatoes of this. Sorry, been two minutes. Let's get over this crap, you know. Check out King Kwon Do at 87, I believe, and Cabal the Executioner. I I'll try to put it in the description. I don't, I gotta find the channels, but cool guys you should sub to them i mean you probably follow them if you follow me it's you all linked together it's the ywc you know, everyone follows each other now the meat and potatoes of this if you have watched wrestling like wwe in the past month or so you read the news or you weren't under a rock you would know that brock lesnar has won the wwe title off john cena yay now my thoughts on this is the way they booked it was stupid but you know i mean it's whatever uh, the whole John Cena, Brock Lesnar thing never worked out with me. Because, one, you're supposed to make this ultimate heel in Brock Lesnar. But at the same time, he's getting cheered because he's kicking John Cena's ass. So he... But my thoughts is, I'm going to do thoughts on it. And I'm going to do, um, you know, what my dream card, I guess, would have been. You know, the way I would do it if everything went perfect for the WWE. Which it never does for obvious reasons. You know, they're idiots sometimes. Bad booking decisions. Oh, crap, yeah. So... Brock Lesnar wins the title, and apparently the greatest match ever, people were saying. Even though when Scott Steiner did the 20 suplexes to Triple H in that match, it was apparently a bad match. So, Yeah, a squash match, which yeah, you should have had more respect for Cena for doing that. A little bit, I guess. I don't know. Because it's one of the situations where you probably had to, you know what I mean? It's not like one of the situations, you know. Yeah, yeah, probably a situation where someone in the backstage, like when Shawn Michaels had a job to um, Stone Cold. He didn't want a job to his ass, but Undertaker's behind the, the, the gorilla, in the gorilla position back there, and he's ready to kick his ass if he wanted to do the job, so maybe someone was back there, you know what I mean, but it's whatever. So yeah, Brock Lesnar squashes him. Um, now Cena came back, and apparently he's rejuvenated. He's a badass now, people saying, yeah. That same old shit. He hasn't changed. Yeah, he's Super Cena now. The rise of Super Cena was glorious on Monday Night Raw. Just see him squash Bray Wyatt and his family like it was nothing. Yeah, that was really awesome. You know, you're trying to build up Bray Wyatt back. Y2J is trying to, at least. At least someone's trying to put him over, unlike Cena. You have freaking Bray Wyatt, <laughs> you know, trying to, get his ad trying to get his character built up. He's starting to get a little steep, but all of a sudden you just set him at John Cena for no fucking reason. Yeah. Makes a lot of sense, right? Yeah. So thanks for, uh, you know, giving a little hope to the Bray Wyatt fans like myself. And then all of a sudden, doo 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 doo. You buried him. That match on Raw was stupid. I watched the beginning of it. 
and I turned it off because I know I was going to turn it and I read the fucking reviews of it. Super Cena for the win, lol. Yeah. So yeah, so they're trying to rebuild up Cena to be like his badass now and he's going to face Brock Lesnar with a new attitude all pumped up and stuff and he's going to catch Brock off guard and Brock's going to cheat the win and then he's going to have a fucking another match and he'll sell probably the finisher. Here's another thing. This is another video another time, but I'm starting to really get tired of the WWE for every big feud they do, it seems like these days. They gotta have a trilogy of three matches. One guy wins one, one guy wins the other, one guy wins the last one. You know what I mean? That kind of shit. I'm starting to get sick of that. You know what I mean? It's like the Wyatt, John Cena one. If they only made that two matches where Wyatt won the second one somehow, or Cena won the second one, and that was the end of the feud, I would have been fine with it. But you made it a trilogy, and look how much you damaged Bray Wyatt's character, obviously. You know, the guy's not look the same no more. Yeah, but, okay. You know, they did with Brock Lesnar with Triple H. Didn't really help Brock that much. Yeah, they do it a lot of different times. It's just, it's whatever. Okay, so dream scenario. This is how I would have done it. This is where everything is going perfectly for the WWE, which they're idiots, so it doesn't happen. Or, just, you know, pretty much one of the main reasons and all that shit. So the first one. Daniel Bryan is healthy during this one. You didn't have the stupid match with Kane where you did that dangerous spot where he fucking hurt his neck and now he's had surgery. He would have did the obvious plan what they wanted to do, have him go to SummerSlam and face Brock Lesnar for the towel. Brock Lesnar would have won, of course. Yeah, doing so, you know, you have Brock be a bigger heel in this situation because he just came up being The Undertaker. He's supposed to be hated. The problem with the John Cena feud is... People are cheering his ass to kick Cena because they can't stand Cena, which is the opposite of what they want. But well, let's just go with it because wrestling fans are idiots because, you know, they don't they don't get it. John Cena does charity. Fucking dumb bullshit. So you have a face Daniel Bryan. People with Daniel Bryan. You, know, you got those fucking guys saying, well, Brock Lesnar's a legit guy. He's the most legit guy there. He deserves to beat everyone and their mama twice. He should be champion for five billion days because no way can people beat him. It's like... Same, that's like the same excuse to use for him for breaking the streak. I don't believe he should have been be in the streak, but a lot of people do just for that reason, you know. Oh, you know, oh, he's the most legit star, you know, he deserves it. Why does he deserve it? Because he's legit. That's a reason? Just because he did MMA and he won the title doesn't mean he should have done or take your streak. Give it to a part-timer. I'm one of the minority that would say, hey... Undertaker never loses the streak, you know, I mean, that was one of those people, but they give it to Brock Lesnar, and you're like, I understand why they did, they want to make a big-ass heel out of him, but it's like, the reason you give me is because he's the legit, and he deserves it, and like, this, he doesn't deserve it, you know, he really doesn't deserve it, he's, you know, and it, it's funny, because the beginning of the whole conversation is, the people who want to end the streak, you had to give it to a young guy, you had to give it to a young guy, you know, I beat the streak, I got a little bruise on my finger, that's what it is, don't worry about it, it's not a bug. You had to give it to a young guy, you know what I mean? It built up the guy to be a superstar. It's the funniest thing, because we're saying it the whole time. Then when Brock Lesnar beat him, those defenders who said the same thing said, oh, the youngster did not need it. You know, he could build his own legacy by himself. He didn't need that one. Brock Lesnar deserved that. It's like, fuck off. Dumbasses. Just because Brock Lesnar did fucking MMA and he beats the people up, yeah. He totally deserves a, a legendary you know, moment, yeah. You know, would I rather have Brock Lesnar win over Cena? Of course. I don't know, kidding, but, you know, if it would give it to Roman Reigns, Seth Rollins, I pray Wyatt. Yeah, but no, you can't do that because Cena fucking killed his ass. Or, you know, my boy Dean Ambrose, who's my favorite wrestler now on the thing. Even Cesaro, you know, hey, there you go. I would have been more happy with that, but whatever. So, Daniel Bryan's healthy. Let's get back to the whole thing. I keep going off like I always do. Daniel Bryan's healthy. He faces Bray Wyatt. And that, that could have been a feud, too, but... You know, leading up to it, you know, it, it, in my perfect world, Bray Wyatt won over Cena at Mania, continued feud, whatever, maybe get Cena the last win, you know, have his fucking fans jerk off, saying, haha, he got the last win, the most important win. Yeah, you know, it's like the whole Rock and Cena thing, it's like, you know, you get the Rock, gives him the second one with the title, so that one's more important, so the, you know, they don't have to have a trilogy, just the Rock, whatever, fuck off, I'm not into that bullshit. So, you can even have him feud with Bray Wyatt after. That would have been a good feud. But no, you see he had to win so he can get the title. You ever notice something here? I always go out track and I am doing it again. You ever notice every time someone goes down or someone leaves for a certain reason, they always just they always cling to Cena? Like, oh, please, Cena, save us. Please, save us. Everyone loves you. You know, you notice Daniel Bryant is gone. All of a sudden, Cena has the titles. What a surprise. 
Dean Ambrose is gone, and now the whole episode of Raw is about Cena re getting retribution off one loss and a million w- after a million wins. Like, come on, dude. You know, the dude's not gonna lose a few too. You know, it's like, oh, what happens if he loses a few? Do you gonna dedicate a whole year to his fucking career? You know, what I mean? he's like, fuck. Like the whole Rock, the thing when he came back and he, he was, oh, I was my re- I'm redeeming that loss out against the Rock. It's like he, he beat everyone else. Deal with it. It's like you're a fucking sore loser. It's like his new name is Sore Loser Cena. God, all he talks about is that fucking loss. Oh, because I—that's why I caused my divorce. No, he banged fucking a fat fucking, sh- fucking stripper, porn star, whatever. Enjoy your life, buddy. I know it's becoming a scene of bash. All right, so Dana Bryant goes SummerSlam faces Brock Lesnar. Same match you have right there. Maybe a little different, more MMA involvement because Dana Bryant is more of a technical wrestler. You give Dana Bryant a little more breathing room, but you do—you make it kind of a squash. Brock Lesnar defeats him. Then you do basically the same booking they're doing now. With Cena is now a badass Cena. Now he's Super Cena. Still so Super Cena. It was glorious when he came back as Super Cena this week, man. Oh my God! I, I thought no one was safe. I thought Brock Lesnar was screwed. Thank God Brock Lesnar wasn't there. Super Cena flew in there, freaking shoved kryptonite up his ass and kicked him to the moon. Yeah. Nah. You build him back, saying, "Oh, you know, I'm gonna come back there. I'm more vicious or whatever." He would sell the injury first of all. It wouldn't be. I came back eight days later. I'm not hurt. I'm not limping. I'm not showing any signs of injury from that beating I got. The beating of the light time, apparently. And I'm just going to come back and clean house. Yeah, it makes no fucking sense. That's no problem with seeing his character. Yeah. I don't hate the guy for, uh, like, different reasons. His wrestling ability, I don't really care for. You know, just the real... Like, People hate seeing him for every small reason. The main reason I hate him is for two things. is his character. It's stale. Sometimes it does not make sense. And his psychology in a match it just makes no sense. Yeah, I mean, he's at a nine count. He pops up like nothing happens. Jumps into the ring. I mean, like, the shit he does. You'll just pull up and do an add to adjustment out of nowhere. He, he looks like he didn't get hurt. That's the problem with him. He doesn't sell injuries or sell anything. That's why people can't get behind him. Because he looks like a god. They book him like a god. And he acts like a god. You know, he's not relatable as a baby face. So, it's, yeah, okay. Another story. So, Dana Bryant, yeah, I know, it's 15 million times I went to Dana Bryant. Dana Bryant loses at SummerSlam, comes back doing the whole scene thing, basically. I'm going to be back and better. They face that. Now you're champions. Something, maybe like a no disqualification match would probably be the one I would think would be pretty good. You know, you have Dana Bryant use some weapons. You know I mean, just do like a little off the wall. Like, it would make sense if he had a chance, if he had like a weapon or something. You just say, like, he got a chair, hit Brock Lesnar in the stomach with the chair. Brock Lesnar starts hurting his stomach because he has stomach problems. I know he's healed about it now, but he can fave it. You know, it gets to the point where Brock Lesnar barely, doesn't barely win, but he still wins somewhat decently. And then after that, you have Hell in a Cell, which is the culmination of it. You have Daniel Bryan versus Brock Lesnar one more time. This is where Brock Lesnar just puts Daniel Bryan out for a few months. Just bam. I mean, he needs time off, first of all, at that point, too. And, yeah, he, he F5s him through the cage or something, you know. Yeah, I don't know what they'll do. They, they, it's a PGR, so they won't ever fucking do that again. But, you know what I'm saying, yeah, they, they'll do something really crazy where it'll just fuck up Daniel Bryan. He can't come back. You know, unlike Cena where he'll come back next week and say, I'm going to kick his ass. I'm, I'm, yeah. Now, so after that, he got a lot of heel heat. That's the whole purpose of that is where it works so good is everyone likes Daniel Bryan. Well, most people. I'm a Daniel Bryan fan. Not biggest fan. They deserve the title, yes. Yeah, and the bullshit storyline they gave him was stupid. You know, making up a go and all that shit. He's a he's he's a relatively badass. But you probably say, oh, "Fuck you." You know what I'm talking about? It's just like they've been made about him. Like he can kick your ass, kick my ass, he kick a lot of bigger guys' asses, in my opinion. But whatever, I'll just address that. So Danny Bryant's out for a while. You got a lot of heat on Brock Lesnar because a lot of people like Danny Bryant. That's the whole purpose of that, and that's why the Cena and Brock Lesnar feud doesn't work. Because Cena, you're supposed to hate Brock Lesnar in this match, and Cena's getting booed and Brock's getting cheered, which makes no sense, right? I know. So after that, who's next? In the perfect world, in the perfect world, nothing happened, nothing went wrong, okay? Now, you say the perfect world would happen with the WWE, you probably say Dave Batista would be the champion, but eh, it's okay about that. What would you do after that? You would have Philip Brooks. He wouldn't be gone. He would stay. He wouldn't take up his ball and go home. He wouldn't bitch about his place. And he has obvious reason to bitch, but some of them are just, like, kind of stupid. So, yeah, he comes, and now he's the guy that challenges Brock Lesnar. Two fan favorites. 
you know, they had a great match the first time. Brock Lesnar won. But CM Punk was tenacious the whole time. And you could build a whole storyline off that. You can get two pay-per-views off that, at least. I don't know the pay-per-views. I think he has, like, six months till Mania or whatever. But whatever. It can culminate during that time towards it. You know what I mean? So, basically, after that, yeah, you have... Yeah, we'll do that. Okay, so you have Philip Brooks face from CM Punk. Facing for two pay-per-views... You know, CM Punk looks like getting the advantage of him the first time. Brock wins by hair, maybe, maybe he cheats. Yeah, you, you, you can have him look smart, you know, like use a chair with the referee's not looking, not be a clean fish, but you can make him look smart doing that. After that, you know, you have him face him again. Because yeah, you have the whole, it's a good storyline because you have the Paul Heyman's parts of it. Paul Heyman can kind of screw him sometimes. You know, you, you have CM Punk with the way you booked it. Have him be tenacious. Have him be a fighter. Have him fight. Just he's not going to win the feud, though. He's not going to win the title. He Brock loses the title, Mania, and it's the right thing to do. So you have two or three. I don't like. And that's probably I don't like the trilogies. I think I said it early in this video, or said the one I did beforehand. Trilogies are stupid. You know, stop doing trilogies. You know, they hurt characters more than they help. You know, it doesn't make it more epic. And when you do like best of seven series, it kind of or best of five series, it kind of demeans it because you're doing the trilogies all the fucking time. Whatever. So you have those two fight off. I just got a ring. Probably saying, oh, what the hell's going on out there, my family? So after that, you have... Let's see. I'm just going to take a, like, a certain amount of pay-per-view. I'm just going to chunk it off. You go to Royal Rumble. This is either between the time that Philip loses that point to where the Royal Rumble is. You can either have a few people go at him. I would not send Randy Orton at him. No, that makes no fucking sense. Anyone's boring. I would like to see his ass kick hit, but he's just boring in my opinion. You know, he's a he's a good wrestler. He's a crisp wrestler, but he's just when he when he knows he's not gonna win or whatever, or he's not interested in a few, he just does not try. And I just don't like that. So after that, you can go after I would say like a Dave a return Dave Batista. Not my whole point of this, Brock Lesnar. You're building a heel. He you beat your glory boy Daniel Bryan, the YWC's glory boy. You beat the other glory boy, CM Punk. This dude's gonna be hated. And if the way he does it, he just like flicks off the internet or whatever. You know what I mean? That'd be fucking hatred right there. He get pure hatred. That's where Paul Heyman make fun of the internet and shit. Just the fans in general. Third guy you sent at him. This is a little wild card I can throw out there. He just came off a movie. You know exactly what I'm gonna say off now. Dave Batista. We've never seen that match before. If you're gonna have him keep the title to Manny, you should do a Batista versus Lesnar. we never seen it before. And I would do it at the Royal Rumble, or before that, I think it's Survivor Series. You know, that's why I don't know the pay-per-views. My bad. So they got after Hell in a Cell Survivor Series. So either... You have Batista on one of the pay-per-views coming up, though. You know, I mean, leading up to it. So you have Batista face him. You know, he looks like he could beat him. You know, they have a, a equal kind of thing, like power versus power kind of match. People say, oh... Well, you know, Brock Lesnar's legit. You know, you shouldn't lose to Batista, you know. No, but you make Batista look strong. The fans will finally get behind him for a reason because they hate Brock Lesnar. You know, that's the whole purpose problem with the first time when he came back as a babyface. You know what I mean? They were bitching about Daniel Bryan for just... I wasn't bitching about him, but you know what I mean? I thought, nah. It was stupid. So you have Dave Batista face him. You know, Brock Lesnar wins with the skin of his teeth or whatever. But the Royal Rumble is the match. That's the big one, I think. Because you got to have Roman Reigns win the Royal Rumble. He's the guy who's going to be Lesnar and Mania. That's my final verdict. Because the whole reason I'm making a new star. You want to make a new star. I know you people hate him for, oh, he has no promo skills. Or no, but guess what? He's a new face, new star. Let's just try it. it doesn't work. Well, guess what? We got the people. That's the whole purpose of building stars. Try them out. See how they work. Pull the rug on them. You don't fucking try them out. Wait till they get hot. To a point where you can't really freaking strike with the cow's hot like a right back. It just pull the rug under him and fucking say, fuck you. You know, that kind of bullshit. You know what I'm talking about. Same with Cesaro and all that shit. And I'm going to make a video about, oh, how did Paul Heyman help Cesaro? But that's another story. So you have John Cena. This is when you have John Cena face Brock Lesnar. He's beat Brock Lesnar before. He's the only guy really you can think of who could beat Brock Lesnar Kate Fabe Wise. Not Lily. You have him face off with the Royal Rumble. This is going to be not a squash match. This is going to be a balanced match, but it's going to be a clean finish where Brock Lesnar beats Cena. You even have a fucking bullshit where Cena rolls out like the fucking Rock did, you know, that bullshit. But now have all the culminations. You beat Daniel Bryant, which is hatred. 
You got Phil Brooks, hatred right there. Dave Batista might be a mixed bag, but people will get behind Batista. They make him a baby face. John Cena, people hate him, but you know you have to throw that feud in just to say, oh my God, Brock's gonna lose the title. You know that's the whole purpose of throwing John Cena there. So you got four guys. Roman Reigns wins the title, uh, not the title, the fucking Royal Rumble. Brock Lesnar is five. You need one more person maybe for the next situation, which you obviously probably know. I, I don't remember how many pods there are, but. So, a pay-per-view coming up in that, further on, is Elimination Chamber. Now, probably this year, Brock Lesnar will not defend the title, and they probably won't even have a match because of his part-time schedule. And this is all perfect world where Brock Lesnar actually travels with people and actually shows up for pay-per-views. You have the Elimination Chamber, a returning Dana Bryan from injured. Big pop. Philip Brooks in that Elimination Chamber. You know, this is like after you can even have like Lesnar betray the authority and authority's pissed off and they put everyone against him basically. Dave Batista, a baby face who actually is getting cheered because people are liking him now, you know what I mean? Especially after they should be cheering him because they put over fucking all those people coming in there and he didn't have to. He could have just won the title, quite frankly. A John Cena with people hate, a Brock Lesnar, you could throw someone else in there. Maybe if Cesaro was still with them. You know, or one of the payment guys to help protect them or something, you know what I mean? That's a that's a good match right there. Of course, you have Brock Lesnar win. You want this dominant heel champ to go in there. And you haven't pinned one of the glory boys like CM Punk or Cesaro <laughs> for funny shit at the end. Or, you know, that'd be cool, too, to have, like, a Cesaro-Lesnar stare down if they were still a Paul Heyman guy. And actually, Paul Heyman actually helps Cesaro. So you have them face each other. Bam, Brock Lesnar beats all of them. He gets a lot of heat. Everyone hating this guy. At the same time, you're booking Roman Reigns. And they're booking Roman Reigns wrong. They are. They're making them look like fucking Super Cena. It's it's stupid. You know, you shouldn't be winning two on one handicap matches easily. With you know, you should be winning by the skin of his teeth or getting his ass kicked. That's how it should be. You know, that's how it should be. But so my thoughts on that is, you know, you have Roman Reigns. You build him up as a human character. I think Roman Reigns is a character right there. But the people they got now is a future star. He's definitely, if you want to top like the big, the fortunate four of Edge. Cena, Randy Orton, and Batista. He was definitely, he could definitely fit the mold of Batista. I see a lot of, like, coolness of, you know, Batista was cool. He was one of my favorites, you know, you know getting up there, you know what I mean? When I watch him, I always watch SmackDown over Raw. So, I mean, I kind of jumped the John Cena bandwagon a little late. But the problem is, I haven't watched the terror he did. I always watch non-cable wrestling, so I always watch SmackDown. Until he moved to sci-fi. And I always watch Batista. I like Batista more. And I like Cena because I was from Massachusetts. That kind of bullshit. But, you know, it's all good. You know. But, I, yeah, I wise, I wise up after I started watching fucking Raw. And I'm like, wow, this is fucking bullshit. So, you have Roman Reigns. Who is, my my opinion, the next generation Batista. The new generation Batista. You know what I mean? Because he's cool. He can't really cut promo. But Batista wasn't really good Home cutter. He has to really get some fucking filler moves though. Like at least an orange drag, a suplex, a dr- he, he's got to like to do a drop kick at least or something. Just something new than the fucking clothesline, clothesline, repeat, clothesline, repose clothesline, repeat, drop kick, repeat kind of bullshit. Like that's that's just every match is the same. You get he's got to new learn some new stuff and make a success. Cause remember how excited when we got when he saw that first time he did that drop kick on the second rope? Like picture if he kept adding moves that were similar to athletic ability like that. And I know the whole reason they do it is to protect him because he's green and all that shit. And they don't want him getting hurt because it ruins their plans because they're hurt before. But the other people getting hurt. But whatever. So you build them up as a human character. You have him lose actually some feuds going up there. After like the Royal Rumble, you have him face Randy Orton or Triple H. Triple H beats him. You know what I mean? You know, you, you make him look human. You make him look like you know, a sympathetic guy. Not a god like they're trying to book him now. Like they do with fucking Super Cena. You know what I mean? Super Roman is the next thing. You, know, you can even have him a few with the Wyatt family. That would have been interesting. And have Bray Wyatt actually beat him. Not with the assistance of having like a, like a best of three series. And Bray Wyatt wins two of them. Well, you know, the first one was helped by his buddies. You know, Reigns beats him the second time or whatever. You get, I, I actually have doing the three series all over again. You know what I mean? Yeah, you could do basically like two of them where Bray Wyatt wins the feud. In the first match, you have Reigns win by, like, just say he got distracted with. Yeah, you know, what's his name? Um, Bray Wyatt gets distracted by Rowan or Harper. And then Rain sends him to Spear. So he has an excuse why he lost. Then the next match, you say, okay, I don't want them on my side or whatever. And have like a steel cage or something. 
but instead of having a steel cage, I know you could do, oh, it's a hill to sell. No, you have a steel cage with a lid on top. That's what I always hate when they do the steel cages, because you always have people walking and shit. You have Bray Wyatt facing them each other in the cage. You have Bray Wyatt win that match, you know, like, as, clearly. You know, like the, like the Daniel Bryant versus Bray Wyatt match, uh, I think the Royal Rumble. So you get people behind Roman Reigns because they're relatable to them. That's the whole problem with the characters today is they're booked like gods, they're booked like wimps, booked like chicken shits, booked like monsters, they're unbeatable. You know, you can say like gods and unbeatable monsters is basically the same thing these days with like Cena, you know what I mean? So you have him face that, you know, you have him face just people. He wins some feuds, he wins them. You know, after he wins the Royal Rumble, he gets on a little streak. He starts beating people left and right. Beats like a Randy Orton, maybe even a Triple H growing up there, you know, because that's like a little test right there, Triple H. If you can do a good match with him, that's be good, you know I mean? You can even throw a fucking cane at him for no reason. You have to demolish the authority, and then Brock Lesnar is the only thing that's left, basically, you know what I mean? And then you have him have a match at WrestleMania, and you have Reigns win, and there you go, you build a new star. You build a guy, Brock Lesnar, again, heat off being everyone's fan favorites in an ideal world. I know this it's not happening, of course. You know, exception to Cena, you know, facing Lesnar. I want Lesnar to win that one. But then you have the Elimination Chamber. You have him dominate, beat all your fan favorites. You made Batista a new face, basically, which you were trying to do the first time. But you're doing it the wrong way by just forcing them there. And then, you know, you book, you make Brock Lesnar his ultimate heel. Everyone fucking hates to do it. You break the streak. You beat the fan favorites and all that. Who could stop him? Roman Reigns, a young guy, finally a young guy coming up there, winning the title. Bam. You got a new star. You can hate the guy, you can like the guy. I don't care. I like Roman Reigns for a great T. I don't like how they're booking him now, but if you book him in a human standpoint going the way I do it, you have a new star. Have him at a suplex, arm drag, headlock takedown, um, fucking all these different moves, you know. You got a star right there. You got, you got a new star in the making. You know, you can't even fuck this over and get everyone pissed off that fucking Seth Rollins cash in that fucking media after he wants the title. I don't know. But yeah, there's my video. That's how I would book Brock Lesnar in an ideal world. Brock Lesnar is champion. Brock Lesnar going to WrestleMania. People he beats, the person who beats him for the title. Makes sense, doesn't it? But you know how the WWE is. It makes sense they're not going to do it. Well, that's the end of this video. You know, just remember, kids. Cena kicks out at two.